This week on Storyboard, we caught up with Nick Law, creative chairperson Accenture Song and Prabha Narsimhan, MD and CEO Colgate Palmolive India at the Goa Fest 2023. And they spoke about the ascendance of AI and much more. And Yes Bank unveiled its refreshed brand identity. The bank's new identity is designed to resonate with the evolving needs and aspirations of the customers. We are catching up with Nipun Kaushal, Chief Marketing Officer and Head CSR, Yes Bank, to find out more. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shabani Gharat. At GoaFest 2023, Storyboard 18 team caught up with leading voices in business and brandscape. Among them was Nick Law. Storyboard 18's Del Shadirani spoke exclusively with Nick, who is the global creative chairperson of Accenture Song, a creative tech-powered organization that closed out FY22 with $16 billion in revenue. Check Nick's views on Accenture's plans, India, creativity, artificial intelligence and much more. Hello and welcome to Storyboard 18, Nick. It's lovely to have you on the show. Great to be here. So straight off the bat, Nick, tell me what is your agenda for India as part of Accenture Song? Uh, why? I mean, I don't know if it's sudden, maybe a, a bit of interest or is it that uh, Accenture is bullish on India now? Well, What's we your take? definitely say we're bullish on India. My personal role changed recently in the new year to be the creative chairman which means that I have a purview of everything creative that's happening within Song, which is the, the part of Accenture that has all the creative assets and the customer-facing um, work. Uh, but also, all, you know, connect back with B Accenture, which obviously is a, is a huge, big tech business operations machine. So, so I, I, you know, and as part of that, because India is such an important part of Accenture, is to come here and meet the people and see what's going on with, our, with, the, with, the, with the creative parts of song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, Accenture Song, previously known as Accenture Interactive, billion-dollar global company, uh, over the last 10 years, for instance, it has acquired um, maybe over 40, 40 companies into its fold. Yeah. Um, so what is your acquisition strategy? Do you have something in mind for India? I know there was recently an acquisition in Indonesia, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, do you have your eyes set on any assets here? I will say that just generally, a lot of the acquisitions that happened for Accenture Interactive mm -hmm. um, happened before, obviously before I started. And, and they fall into two, two categories from an agency point of view. One is design, right, and all of the sort of related versions of digital product and, and, and commerce and, and the all experience stuff, and then the, more the advertising and marketing. So that's the sort of span of, of, of creative assets that we look at. And obviously, you know, for, for, ac for an acquisition to, to be worthwhile, it needs to be strategic and connect back into the larger you know, sort of connected offering that we have. So that's a really important part. And, you know, I'm going to talk today about, about in the end, creativity is about combinations and connecting different things. And, and we have a lot of pieces to connect at Accenture, which gives us our superpower. Something that I've observed, uh, sort of over the last 10 years, uh, while India as a market has gained significant creative cloud, it is also in a way becoming a, a back end for agencies, networks, for marketing services companies, everything from software development to, you know, uh, cheap and fast content creation. Now, I mean, you know, maybe take off your Accenture song hat and tell me as someone who's been in this business that long, what are some of the advantages and risks of something like that happening, especially when we are on this cusp of greatness, so to speak? Yeah. Well, so from the outside looking in for years and years, because I've been coming to India for a long time and I have a great affection for the place. Um, India has always had this amazing sort of technical ability, you know, great engineers. You know, I, when I worked in Silicon Valley, there were lots of amazing software engineers and there's a whole fleet of Indian born CEOs that are running tech companies. Uh, and then there's this, uh, this great film business that you have and that, and that obviously seeps over into sort of TV advertising and everything. So this great craft at in some ways the most emotional end 
of the industry and then there's this great technical ability. But I would also say that when I think about creativity, I also think about, about the technical side. You know, one of the reasons that creativity and, and technology needs to be so close now is because the advent of new technology is so rapid and has accelerated so much that if you don't have creative practitioners working with great technicians, then you don't take advantage of those, of those technologies. Every technology to a creative person is a new medium to explore. And, and the act of inventive a in a technology is in itself creative. So in some ways, I see technology and creativity as, as two sort of creative forces coming together, one of invention and the other one of, 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 sort, of, 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 of sort of creative. So I don't really distinguish as much as other people between creativity and technology because I think they're so dependent on each other mm -hmm. that, that you, and so going back to India, so India has this amazing, uh, you know, technical foundation that can only be good. That can only be good because the, the technology changes happen, as I was saying before, so rapidly that, that in some ways mastering those technologies creatively has to catch up. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have creative people and, 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 and technologists working together, then you're going to get left behind, which we've seen happen, um, you know, in the past totally. over and over yeah. again. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, technology, of course, and, you know, AI. AI is, is all the buzzword and I mean it's more than a buzzword and the point you mentioned about how fast things are evolving and how quickly technology changes but it's also the kind of speed and scale of mass adoption that we've seen with generative AI that has in a way uh, surprised people maybe, thrown off a few folks, mm -hmm. there is curiosity, excitement but there's also very palpable fear. So, what is your general sense of what is happening? Well, the thing that characterizes it is not only that it's been democratized very quickly, like I think one of the fastest, um, you know, install bases in over a short period of time of any, any technology. Uh, it's, it's not just that, but it's also the, um, uh, the, the fact that it's machine learning means that you're not waiting for, um, you know, for people to create new updates. It's doing updates itself. So that's why it's sort of exponentially changing. And you know, it's sort of dizzying to see what you could create six months ago compared to what you can create today. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a new, you know, uh, a new thing that comes out, either from an image point of view or a text point of view, it just seems mind boggling. Right. And so I think at some point we will see of it less, we'll see of it less as a trick. Because right now we're still so enamored by the fact that this thing can happen. And it's not, we're going to have to wrestle it to the ground and, 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 and master it and create new grammars around 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 creativity i think that's what's coming i mean the the other thing that's important to note is unlike other technologies that have sort of come along even the creators of these technologies are very aware of the of the of the uh, some of the ex externalities so the conversation with government you know with regulators with government amongst the community is happening already so that at least is promising to me, you know. And as a as a as a creative person, um, I only see it. I see it as an accelerator of creativity, um, and I I see it as something that needs to be mastered. One of the things I think we need to be careful of is to understand that this is not just like every technology that comes along. It's not. It doesn't make people that are not very talented enormously talented. Mm -hmm. It makes. It means that you get a sort of baseline that's better than the last baseline. But the quality of thinking that, you know, of brilliant people still matters. In, fa in fact, some ways it matters more. Well, it was lovely chatting with you, Nick. Thank you. It was Thank nice you so much. You. Thank no you. Problem.